painting that translucent ghost and now for round two on the translucent miniatures we have the banshee which comes in that same pack again it's a reaper miniature um nozzles D, D miniatures 450 pretty good deal all right so before we start uh, i have to have something that's throwback since i'm not using the old inks that i was using in the last one because i'm going to try something different here is my throwback. All right, check that out. It's like a Triceratops warrior that is so old, I don't even remember where I got this. I kind of remember the shop, but I don't remember the brand. It's got, I don't think you can see it, but T-A-G, there you go, on the bottom of it. I don't know what company this was. Um, I'll have to paint this up someday. It's kind of a neat little miniature. You know, some of those older miniatures uh, were a little cheesy. This one's not bad. Okay, so so I don't have to do it at the end of the video. I know some people like to see what are all the tools that you use. Um, I kind of haphazard mine. I've got a number three brush right here. Probably going to be using that to soak up any excess when we're doing any washes. I've got a another number three so we've got two of those I have here a number two brush and then here is the Ott brush alright here's obviously the Banshee and the colors that we're going to use at least start out with is you might remember this from last time it's that Nagroth Knight it's a Citadel base color we've got some Vallejo colors we've got flat blue we've got flat red and then we've got some of the uh, MSP paints, so the Reaper Mini Collection. We've got Fire Orange. Again, there's our Heartthrob Pink and Pale Green. I've got another orange back here, another Viejo Clear Orange, because I'm looking at doing um, orange on her belt. I don't know why, they just seem to like to put belts on these translucent miniatures uh, or sashes but I'm not sure which shade of orange that I want to use. So I'm going to do this one differently. Um, instead of doing the inks, I'm going to do paints, which means that I'm going to be using um, a wet palette. So you probably have heard a lot about wet palettes. If not, I would highly recommend that you watch some videos on those. Um, I have not gone through and purchased one because I'm just a hobbyist and a lot of this is kind of put together. This is just a pencil case. And originally, I didn't like the way the bottom was not flat. So what I did is one of my daughters had some old plastic folders. So I cut out the plastic folder. I hot glued it in there to make a nice flat surface. And I'm just using paper towel with some butcher paper over it. This is a little bit of color on there from when I did the basing on the ghost miniature. And that was just the other day. So I'm just going to put the rest of my colors over here because I'm cheap. We've sped up the video. I'm just kind of looking over the mini. It has an underskirt and an overskirt. Both of them actually did. I'm not sure why. So again, I'm doing the underskirt in that Nagroth Night Purple, a real nice dark shade. I like it. I've, I've used it for shadowing for other things since then. So um, you know, put a little bit of water in there, kind of get it to a glaze consistency, uh, take the excess off of my brush, and away I go. Once I get that underskirt done, now it's time to go with the blue, um, with the flat blue on the regular skirt. What's kind of nice about this skirt, it had a couple of holes in the over skirt where the purple shone through, which I thought was really, really nice. So the flat blue um, didn't cover as well. I wasn't quite happy with that. Um, I had to scrape a couple times. You see the X-Acto knife. I found out that using the X-Acto knife was a great tool to get rid of paint in unwanted places. All right, so now I'm kind of looking at the belt. Again, I'm using those Reaper miniature paints, which I think are thinner than either the Viejos or the Games Workshop paints. So, you know, I am kind of thought that would be a nice match. I wouldn't have to put as much water and might have a little more control over that. Uh, 
but they're more translucent. And so when I was done with it, I wasn't quite as happy. But in the meantime, I will probably end up going and doing the blouse before I realize that the orange is not dark enough. So I did the heartthrob pink. Um, the blouse drove me a little bit nuts on her back. She's got some big flat areas, you know, shoulder blades, and with these translucent minis that just wouldn't hold. So once I got the pink on there, though, uh, I noticed that the belt was too light. So I put in some of that flat orange uh, Vallejo and kind of shaded in almost a reverse highlight, which would be like a shade, some of those grooves and deeper parts so that there'd be a little bit more contrast in that. All right. Um, so I wanted to make that a little bit deeper. All right. So after I played with the belt for a while uh, and hitting the lines, I decided that the blouse needed to be a little bit more opaque. Uh, I really like to be able to see lines and have some contrast. I didn't want this to be a monochromatic miniature. Um, so I added a little bit more red and tried to get it into the lines to see if I could get some differentiation. And then I ended up adding a little bit more red in there and going over it again to see if I, if coat after coat I could get it to cover. Uh, sometimes on that shoulder blade, it just would not cover in those flat areas. So after my living pink and red hell, I've decided to go green on the arms and green on the face. Uh, that pale green actually worked out really well. However, it was very hard to see the details, especially on the face. The arms are fine because they kind of hang out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you can get that translucent light, the light coming through. Uh, it's not being overshadowed by anything. There's no back color on it. However, with the face, I was worried that the hair was going to show through. Uh, so I, I worked that on, on her for a while. And then made sure I had to clean out the eyes again where the green got into the eyes and then painted the neck. Just wasn't happy with how the neck was, was being finished because the neck was next to the blouse and then kind of a transition to the face and the hair. It just was too translucent. So worked on that for a while. Uh, it was sometimes hard to see where her nose was, where her hair started. I actually had to start painting in order to find those things out. So you can see me take the other brush and take away some of that paint. And there we have it. Okay, then after working on that face and cleaning out the eyes, I decided to do the hair. That turned out quite nicely, I thought. I wanted to do red hair on this banshee from the beginning, going for the stereotypical Irish red hair even though I don't think I know anybody in Ireland with red hair. My wife's family all has dark hair, but there are redheads in Ireland, it is true. So the hair turned out really, really nicely. Then I decided to really work on the eyes. So you get out the white. What I wanted to do with this is make the eyes more noticeable. So to put a, a white background on the eye and then cover the eye with another color, so that would make that other color brighter and more visible. So I take that, that single ot brush and get that white in that eye. Now when I opened up my white paint after shaking it, it kind of gushed out. And I don't know why these eyedropper bottles sometimes do that. I don't know if the temperature changes so there's a pressure difference or what it is. If anybody knows how I can avoid that, please write something in the comments. Let me know. I hate wasting paint being a cheap old rad dad. It kills me when I had, I had enough white paint to paint the entire mini, much less two small tiny eyeballs. Speaking of eyeballs, there's my extra, extra eye. As you know, I wear my second oldest daughter's glasses from when she was about nine years old, the Harry Potter ones, and sometimes I need even more magnification, and here it comes. So you can't see a darn thing that I'm doing. All right. So we've got the blue eyes in, the white. We're going to go with the blue. It looks pretty creepy right there. I like it. Uh, the eyes turned out pretty well. I know I'm going to put a little bit of white or a little bit of white on her teeth. So now I'm looking at redoing her. All right, because I scraped off the arms. I just didn't think it matched with the rest of them. It was they were too opaque. 
So I used my old school green ink, which is kind of a bluey green. I hardly ever got to use it before. And just gave her kind of a nice glaze slash wash. I just learned the difference between those two when I started painting again uh, to get her arms. So on the actual figurine, the arms are very translucent and look really cool. The face I ended up doing quite a bit darker because with the red hair behind her face, if her face is translucent, all you can see is the red hair. And even with the heavier amount of paint that I did on her, it still has that effect a little bit. All right. I was looking at this thing. Uh, the dark colors definitely look better. I wasn't really happy with it. I figured I'm going to touch up the eyes a little bit, the teeth a little bit, and then take my own advice. When you start getting frustrated with something, just put it down and walk away and come back. And I find the amazing thing is... Seven out of ten times you walk back and you look at that miniature and it looks way better than you thought it looked when you put it down. I think part of it's psychological because you're not thinking about the mistake as much. Uh, sometimes it's the paint drying and sometimes it's just you're tired and you're not seeing things right. Okay, so all I'm doing now is putting on those finishing touches. So that's two translucent mini videos in a row. Uh... I've been painting a little bit longer. I think what I'm going to be doing now is, since I'm a 20th century hobbyist, I'm going to be tackling new techniques and new things that generally weren't done a lot in the 20th century. So translucent minis would be one. Making a cape for a cobalt's another. All right, here's the final product. As you can see, uh, some of the translucents turned out really well. She's a... I think a little bit more translucent than the Ghost. I did it with a gloss finish because I thought that worked better with the light. Here's the comparison between her and the Ghost. Of course, I have the light on. You can't really see that well, so let's turn that light off. Thank you very, very much. So as you look, uh, I think her blouse got a little bit too red. I'd like to have kept it pink. If I had it to do over again, I'd do a totally different color. Uh, if I really wanted to go translucent on the face... I would have gone with a different hair color, but I like the red hair. Uh, you can see her face looks much, much darker in the video. In real life, it doesn't look quite that extreme, but in pictures and on video, it does. Uh, so you can see there's the ghost. Was I able to take translucent minis and paint them semi-translucent so you can kind of see through them a little bit like Slimer on Ghostbusters? Mixed result. Uh, I think these things are great if you're going to do a monochromatic mini uh, and do it that way. Your rogue that's invisible or however you want to do that, they're cool. These were okay, a little bit frustrating. My next project, the reason I got these was to practice for some shadow demons that I have. I've got three of them. Uh, I think I'll paint two of them off camera. I'll try using the glazes with inks. I'll try using glazes with paints. Third one I'll do on camera. And we'll go from there. So if you liked it, please hit like. Feel free to put some comments down there. Uh, and this is the Rat Old Dad signing off. Thank you very, very much.